ever saw him again. So for Cloud9, we're seeing Blabber come back, and I was watching his Academy games. He's doing really well. He played Rek'Sai both games, she's back, and he smashed on both of them. So in the past, when Jensen was on the roster, they would have him play Zillion, things that would enable Blabber, whether he was playing Kindred or something else. And I think Niski is also the type of player that can do well enabling something like an aggressive jungler as well. So I'm curious to see what shakes out here in Champ Select. We have Riven and Thresh banned there by Cloud9 and Silas and Lucian banned by Golden Guardian. Yeah, I like the Silas ban there. It's something that uh, it's going to be banned against Cloud9, whether it's first round or second round. It has to just be taken away because of the fact that it's a flex pick for them. Niski played it both times in the last two games. And then Licorice has shown that he's great on it. Now we're at that first pick, Ezra Lucian gone. Is it a Rek'Sai for Blabber? What do they think it is here? I'm actually quite unsure because we're kind of seeing what the priority is now for a lot of these teams on this new patch because there aren't a ton of must bans. It's kind of Lucian, maybe Silas, Thresh, that's about it. Yeah, I do like the Ezreal ban by Cloud9. It takes it away from Jeff Lee, but opens up some more picks, maybe like the Rek'Sai here in the draft. However, they are not tipping their hand just yet. They'll actually take Alistar as their first pick overall. So a nice good pick for both these supports actually. So. Yeah. Always want to get it first if you can. Yeah, and with the Thresh band away here, they're kind of taking away champions that Olay can perform really well on and have good consistent performances. So Tom Kench and Braum are the two that stick out to me as being left here for Olay, kind of in his wheelhouse. We've seen the departures be pretty weak for him. The Orin game was not very good. He played, I believe, a uh, it was a Soraka game as well at one point. And it just hasn't been the same for Olay. He seemed to be kind of the player with the most inconsistent performance on Golden Guardians. There is Callista first pick there for Golden Guardians, so always a good tool to help save your support if needed and can combo with many other champions, also perhaps just denying it away Ooh. from Sneaky as Jace will be locked in here by the Golden Guardians, which we have seen in three different roles, I believe, in the LCS already. Yes, yes we have. He's been in the top lane, he's been in the mid lane, the jungle, and bot lane. Oh, he has two. So he's been in four, right? Uh, the jungle one is interesting because it's not really ganks. You kind of do a drive-by, you're like, here's a shock blast. All right, that guy has to back earlier. Sometimes I've seen Dark Harvest, so I wonder if this does go to contracts. That would be interesting. But it's a huge flex pick, a major flex pick here that doesn't give anything away in the draft. Also curious to see Tristana's stock rising. She was traditionally pretty good into Callista lane, so looks like Sneaky will take this one here. We saw it in Apollo, for Apollo last hey. game, and Rek'Sai is locked in for Blava. You already said it. He's undefeated this week on this champion. Yep, and Rek'Sai is back, and she got banned in the first game, not picked in the second, but right here, we're going to be talking a decent amount about her because her quality of life buff, she didn't get any damage buffs directly, but her pattern is way more reliable, harder to dodge the R. Her Q now kind of plays into her pattern with Conqueror and her Fury generation, so she is a early game menace. The vision and the fact that she has great skirmishing just makes it so Cloud9, this already early game dominant team, can be even more dominant here with this pick. Right, you can see now, actually LeBlanc the pick for Froggen, so we'll start banning away mid laners. Lissandra is the first selection. I'm expecting Zoe to join the pack there as well, as Niski has been incredible on that champion. But Cloud9, we'll see what direction they want to take. They've got the bot lane and the jungler, so looking to shore up those solo lanes, perhaps. The interesting thing here is there hasn't been a Galio ban or pick. And Galio is pretty high priority for a lot of teams. We saw it even first picked in the last game. Uh, and pairing that with something like a Kalista even would be fantastic in my opinion, because then you can start going to these J side lanes if it is a side laner, if LeBlanc starts getting into a split push pattern. So I wonder if Golden Guardians want to pick that themselves here in the next round. Well, do you have that Braum ban as it wasn't taken early? There's the Zoe ban we expected. Good job. Gonna be taken away from Niski and Galio certainly does stick out. Plenty of options here for LA, and they will take it away. Look at you. Yeah, look at you. You had to call the Zoe one. I mean, that means Tom Kench is kind of what's left here. Uh, you can go Morgana as well if you really want to. Tom Kench becomes the, uh, like I was talking about Galio going to the side lane, Tom Kench is also very similar with his ultimate. So if you are looking for a split push strategy, which the Jace will sometimes indicate, but it can flex, where the Tom Kench will enable that by having somebody shadow him and you could potentially bring a buddy along too. There is the TK locked in, so Cloud9 now have to finish off their draft. I think if you had to guess, you'd probably think that Hansa will be the one up on the Jace there in the top lane, so Liquid perhaps considering that in this pick. Ooh. We are going to fall back to Orn though, interestingly, for Cloud9. We have not seen Orn really do too well in the top lane recently since the changes. A lot of people went with, hey, he's going to be in the bottom side of the map, he's going to be a support here. The Orn against the Jace. I'm really interested to see how this goes. If this is a Jace top lane here, because of course still flexible, but I feel like that's a good matchup for the Jace. Well, 
course, Niski still with the champion to pick as well here versus LeBlanc. So I'm expecting something relatively stable. Oriana always jumps to mind, so that will be the selection there for Cloud9. But yeah. given how much praise we've thrown Licorice's way, it is the, the blabber effect, I'm going to call it. He comes on a teams and somebody has to, you know, give him resources so he can carry because he is such a dominant jungler when he gets rolling. Yeah, he becomes incredibly, uh, I would say, aggressive. But the one thing is keeping a leash on blabber is a bad thing. You really want to just enable him to do his thing. And that's kind of what we've been seeing more and more. If this is an Elise, then it means that that's going to be that Jace in the top lane. Is Elise there for contract? Considered Lee Sin, but that's a matchup we've seen time and time again, and Rek'Sai generally wins. Yeah, Je Rek'Sai will win that one because you can pretty much always knock up the Lee Sin Q and negate the second part of the damage uh, if you just time it correctly. So the Elise here, what I'm thinking this is going to be is Elise will start going to the top side of the map, and you can turret dive with the Jace very early on with Repel. So if Contrax is playing this a high, in a high tempo way, they'll start visiting that top lane. If they can get pressure for Hauntzer, Hauntzer can be a Jace bully. Contrax can turret dive. They could potentially bring Olay uh, along as well. Because I don't really see you getting anything on this bottom lane that has an Alistar and then this Tristana that's so hard to pin down. But um, that's, this means that Blabber has his work cut out for him. He has to be able to track Contrax and go for a clever path to make sure he gets priority top side and kind of keeps uh, Licorice safe. And it does play play into cloud Nine style. I would say they've been really active around the top half of the map. You've talked about Niski constantly leaving his lane and going for roam. We've talked about Licorice being such a solid player that can carry games from almost any position. I do think the attention shifts a little with Blabber joining the lineup, but the, the rough game plan remains the same. Expect a lot of activity towards the top side of the map, although just expect Blabber to be the one leading the charge rather than someone like Licorice. Yeah, you're going to be looking for kind of Niski and Blabber to lead that charge. Niski, like we said, he's got the highest kills and assists pre-15 minutes at 20, and only one of those has happened in the mid lane. So it's all on the side lanes for him. It's going to be going to the bottom, going to the top, might be looking for some dives, counter dives. Well, we'll have to find out. Cloud9 still in that hot streak 6 0 as they enter this weekend, looking for win number seven. Golden Guardians started 0 4, have had ups and down weekends since then, but would love to start this one off with a win. Yeah, if we're going by recent record, Cloud9 6 and 0 in their last six, Golden Guardians 4 and 2. And like Froggen said, that sleeve is 4 0. Exactly. It's all the sleeve here as Cloud9 and Golden Guardians spread out onto Summoner's Rift. Certainly, Froggen also running the Ignite there with that LeBlanc and the Electrocute, so keeping those damage chain numbers nice and high in this game. Yep, and we're seeing more and more of Phase Rush Orianna when she is picked up. Even though, like, Aerie hasn't changed or anything like that, people have just started to go towards this Phase, ru phase Rush for the mobility, getting out of ganks, getting away from ganks, and then later on in the game, you can chase people down with your movement speed increase, or even just create a, a delta in terms of movement between you and the enemy. There's some cuteness there as well. The slow resistance helps against something like LeBlanc's chain, so lots of little things, like you said. Ariana really has always been a champion that is about utility and enabling more than anything else. They don't need too much more to make her that much better. As we did see that Blabber was spotted by the Spiderling, but looks like no jungle will be disrupted. Yeah. And as expected, Blabber is going Conqueror. Yeah, he's Conqueror. He's going to go all the way around here and go to his red buff. Uh, I wonder what he does second. Because one of the big things is Rek'Sai kind of went extinct in pro play after we saw the double scuttle meta. Because Rek'Sai is a level 3 jungler, and like a true level 3 jungler, where if you don't have your true damage or your E, you are pretty much useless. Now with Conqueror, you can show up in the river, and her Q will stack it, her Unburrow will stack it, her basic attack, and then her auto will stack it. So she gets Conqueror very, very quickly early game, so she can actually kind of participate in those scuttle rebuttals. We'll get some help here as well by Zazel and Sneaky. So that means Deathly and Ole are first to the wave. But that will give Blabber some perhaps needed tempo increase to make sure he can get out on the map quickly. As far as this 2v2 go, those we have seen some explosiveness, mainly from Zazel finding good angles. But for the most part, Cloud9 have just stayed very solid in their 2v2. Yeah, they've been pretty pretty solid, I would say. Sneaky has some pop-off games on Ezreal with high damage where he's able to poke. But now going for that scaling champion with the Tristana. I mean... I'm interested to see how much he's able to do in this game because it's a very safe lane for them. And you can see now, Blabber, level two, goes for the Scuttle Crab here. Not too afraid because he's got the red buff and the Conqueror. And that'll get him level three off three camps. Yep, now I'm going to go over to the Raptors and continuing to clear that jungle contract already on his red side of the jungle. So we'll see if he gets the second Crab there on the left-hand side. Other than that, Froggen is doing a decent job here early, just getting some 
pressure in onto the mid lane. Well, the thing that I'm like looking at earlier is Hanser, what he's able to do in that top lane up against this tank. He's kind of zoning Licorice off a of farm, trying to make sure that he can't get anything. He's got double his CS now, has this big wave coming in, and Contracts is running to the top side. Well, I do want to see how you're watching today's games at home, but I can't do it unless you tag at LOL Esports with the hashtag HowILCS. That way you could show up on the LOL Esports Instagram story. So get those pictures in. Yep, see what you look like what your setup looks like. Oh, somebody tweeted that they were watching with their kid the other day. That one was that one was my favorite. That's actually. heartwarming. It's a little baby. Jungle great. invade? Not so much. Glover actually yeah, he trying to get the spider out of his jungle. I'm familiar with this experience. Down the bottom though, 2v2. Definitely getting aggressive. Ole took some damage already, but Sneaky will be forced to rocket jump away. Spears get pulled out. The rent does not take him down, but he gets a little low. Yep, right here, Contracts is going to be able to push out Blabber from the jungle. Hauntzer has that top lane priority. And this was something where it you know, goes to the top side. You don't really need your blue as the rec side, but the experience is something that you want, and that'll give contracts an advantage. So they're using the Elise last pick and the Jace flex to finally get something on this top side. It's very little, but it's a camp advantage. It's a CS advantage. And this is where Golden Guardians need to play is this top side. Yeah, you might not want it that much, but contracts will surely take it. As Niski now under pressure. Got that cleanse to get out. Oh, get away for the cocoon. Damage already there. He's forced to flash. Repel out from contracts and Niski burns the summoner. Yeah, I really like that. Where he walks up, just auto attacks, basic attack over and over again. And Niski got popped and he didn't have to blow his cleanse because he didn't get CC'd, but he waited longer to blow his flash. So he took a ton of damage. It's going to force him back. Yep. Also, Ignite held for Froggen. So there's just a straight up summoner advantage now in that 1v1. As Blabber trying to get what camps he can. Sentinel's also patrolling the right hand river. Thanks to Defly, so it does feel like Golden Guardian's doing well with these first five minutes of play. Able to get some of that pressure down as Licorice battling Haunter, but as always, Jace very tough to beat in the early game. Yeah, and when he's up against a melee matchup, even though he's out of mana, he's just going to be able to get that back by meleeing the minions if they don't have anything to kind of counter with on the other side. Licorice is doing pretty well in this matchup, though, just being down a bit of the CS, and he's not in kill range either, so he doesn't have to worry too much about getting dove just yet, but if he takes like a Shock Blast or two more, like he actually just did, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna be in trouble now. And it is Klepto, Jace, we've seen this quite a few times, but nothing uh, super lame bully or harassment, but as like gold stacks up, as you build an advantage, it just feels like you really can't do anything 1v1, which is exactly where the Jace wants to be. Blabber has snuck in down to that bottom lane, so he's trying to tip the balance of power over Cloud9's way. There's a jump in from Sneaky. Now they have to know something's up. Pretty sick, it hits all A, but definitely just eats mm. a bad end of that trade. Yeah, that was a bit of a force there, but they do push the bottom lane out, so that means he gets scuttle priority here. Uh, Contracts has gone for a back, has more combat stats because he has the Amplifying Tome, so you want to fight this. It's kind of like if you see a Longsword advantage or anything like that, you want to go for that fight. Smite Hit him. Up for both as well. There's the cocoon landing. Damage down for Contracts. Blabber now going to unborrow his smite back and do some damage with that furious bite. Actually fight down the bottom side as well. Cloud9 trying to help that yeah, jungle, but they might get something in the bot lane instead. Black Jump knockout. again. They're going to go for it. There's the unborrow onto Deathly. First blood on the table. Gifted to Zazel. And now Contracts trying to find a way in here with Froggen. Stun Lance hits onto Blabber, but Froggen, he's the one that needs to swoop in for these kills. He's ready with level six. Who can he try and find a pick off on Blabber? He's gonna be the next target. Great headbutt there. Jumping onto Frog and they wanna try and get yet another kill. But Contract finds the assassination onto Rek'Sai. But Sneaky, he's back Frogan, in again. Back in. But that might be a mistake. He's forced to flash away. He's ignited. Right, flash. Froggen flashes, gets the kill on Golden Guardians. Come out ahead. And Froggen, man, that sleeve is doing work. He just roamed down, actually got so much done there for his team. And Niski is just mid lane, getting not even a plate here. And he has no response to this. We saw Froggen push out the mid lane early, then it was Contracts bullying Blabber to the bottom side. This was just kind of a corralling of C9 to the bottom side, and then just the cleanup. Your mid laner roams the ro most, I roam the most, yep. Froggen, as this was a chaotic skirmish. Yeah, watching the minimap, Froggen's already on his way. This should be called off by Cloud9 at this point, but they really want that kill. Blabber sees it, goes for the flash, two seconds before he has his smite back up to blue smite finish the kill so he doesn't get the second kill there but he gets the flash out from deathly and now froggen comes in they don't have vision of this bush throws the chain barely hits blabber they get vision of it so contracts can actually land everything hits him with the cocoon flashes after and then the repel up to try and get out froggen now he's just going to turn it after sneaky jumps in Perfect setup there, the Q, the Ignite, and then Flash Auto, and that's that's the finisher there. That's where you know exactly how much damage you're going to be doing as a mage basic attacking. It just feels like, again, 
Sneaky you could see all these different rocket jump resets winning that skirmish for them. Instead, it is Golden Guardians that go up in kills and up in gold. Froggen with a blue buff with a few stacks on that Dark Seal already. Now with his last chapter completed, Golden Guardians will be happy with that 1,000 gold lead. And there's still plenty of good news on the other side of the map as well. Gold lead has slowed down a little bit here in top as far as the CS differential goes, but between that Cull and Klepto, Haunza should be having a final time. Yeah, it's funny because Jace is supposed to be like this big late game champion, but he's investing in his early game and saying, I have a really easy early game here. Let's get some Klepto stacks. Let's get some farm. Let's get a Cull and invest in being stronger in the mid late game. So it'll be a while before this Jace actually powers up, but that's been the Golden Guardian style, is winning in the late game. Cloud9 are more of that early game team. So if the early game actually goes the way of Golden Guardian, it could be voting really well for them coming in the future. You can see Niski just eating so much pressure here from Froggen. And Froggen's playing in a really oppressive way. Like, he has a jungle advantage here with Contracts, who's been doing better. And hanging around, Rek'Sai is actually at the Drake. They're going after Niski. He's got everything. Oh, that was so good by Contracts. Weaved it around the minion wave, now forced to repel down. Does have somewhere to go. Why? The Frog Wave will not connect Niski. He must have thought he had nowhere to repel to. There's there's a huge wave right there. He's... Oh. And that mistake almost cost him his life as Froggen dives back in. That Ignite is so close to being yeah. back up cooldown. Blabber does get the Drake for Cloud9, but Niski is getting punished here. Yeah, he gets the Drake. It is an Infernal. It'll help them scale up later. You kind of want that Mountain or even an Ocean, I think, would be best here. I think Ocean would definitely be the best here for cloud Nine situation. But the Infernal will help them scale. They have a Tristana for the late game. They have a tanky composition for when it gets to that point. It, it's just they have to get there. They can't let this oppression that's coming out from Golden Guardians take the early game and turn it into a snowball. Again, Blabber, the kind of player we expect to be doing this sort of thing alongside his mid laner, but Contracts that jungle counter pick essentially paired in with Froggen's aggression is going to give them a blue buff steal as Froggen continues to build advantage here in the 1v1. Yeah, and they haven't been able to really do much with that Jace top. It's just been keeping Licorice under turret, getting some CS from him. But Orn's passive, where he can just buy items there, means he can get the Catalyst, he can buy whatever he needs at any time, has Biscuits to survive the lane. So he's pretty much going to be fine unless there's one part where he dips down in HP and is dove at that point. Bottom lane is a dive brewing here onto Deathly and Olay. Out of vision on the ward, so aware of that placement at least. The minion wave is slowly coming in towards the turret. They're trying to keep it away from the turret. They see it. Olay has gobble. And there's Blabber. They're going to go in onto Olay first. He gets pulled back. Now they have to reinitiate. Knock up there. In onto go Blabber. The damage is good. Actually, there's the Umbro with the ulti there, but not quite enough to get the devour. Olay in a 2v3 situation. Going to be maybe more kills. Buster Shot moves definitely away. They go back in. They get the kill. Zazel barely knew that would work. And now definitely going to force Sneaky away, but here's Frog to play cleanup duty. There's Zazel down already. Sneaky needs to keep running down the lane. Yeah, he needs to keep going. Froggen, I don't think he'll actually be able to reach him. He'd have to flash for it, but he doesn't have it. Yep, no ulti either. Already used it in the earlier exchange. So Sneaky will live. Niski will push up and finally collect some plate gold. But he has been tethered to this mid lane on Orianna, and Froggen is running wild in the bot side of the map. froggen has been able to get these big roams off, and... It's been quite impressive because he's pushing the lane and then he's getting to the side lanes and affecting them more than Niski is. Right here, Blabber goes in. Definitely, I think, actually uses his Ren while Olay has Blabber in his belly here for trying to finish him off here. We'll see when he actually rips the spears out. It's right there, I believe. Yeah, it's right there. So he goes for the slow. So when he tries to stack them back up on Zazel, he doesn't have it again. And I think that was maybe a, a premature use of the rend there because the fight was going in their favor after that. Yeah, thankfully Froggen is here to clean up this kill and save the back end of the fight from going wrong. In fact, it goes right for Froggen. Mm -hmm. And Niski losing plates. Froggen about to collect number two here. CS lead doesn't look that substantial, but Froggen's gold certainly will. Licorice gonna get stunned up. Contracts looks for his next victim. Will get his flash forced out. Ooh, and that means that is Dive City up top. You want to be there for that Orin in the next five minutes and get that Jace ahead, because that Jace can take turrets so quickly. So right now, it's like, let's get these guys to the top lane as soon as possible. Froggen, next time you got priority, after that fight, let's see what we can do. Right there, we already have contracts going into the top side jungle, looking for what he can get here. Because he's two solo lanes are pushing. Mm -hmm. I mean, contracts can afford to play fairly recklessly as far as invades go. Now a 2v2 brewing. Licorice no ulti, though. Flash on Barrow. Oh. Blabber wants to 
wants the kill, but Hortzer will just flash away from it. Niski can't join, so that's play called off for Cloud9. Yeah, and you gotta watch out there, because Hauntzer's HP dipped down, Rek'Sai ultimate any, any lower, and it would probably kill him at that point, because the Warrior's already completed, it's got a really high AD ratio on it, and so that missing HP would come in and probably finish him off, so has the stopwatch now, and we'll have to watch for that in the future, but these, these are getting really close. It's almost like any anything goes a little bit different, then somebody's going to die. It does continue to be in advantage for Golden Guardians, though. You can see LeBlanc so far already up 1,200 gold. I mean, he's also got five stacks of Dark Seal, so he's in a really great spot AP-wise, and he's getting even more plates here before they fall off. Yep, grabs another. 30 seconds or so to collect the next one, so that's probably all the plate money left in this game, at least in mid lane. So Frogger now going to go back, probably as his first item done. I mean, it hasn't been a particularly exciting 1v1 here in the top side, but I think Haunt has done a good job simply containing Licorice more than anything else. And Blabber, he's trying to make plays, but he just doesn't have the lane priority to really get it done. Maybe hoping the bot side of the map is the place where they do have some of that pressure. Yeah, because they don't have priority top lane because the draft picking that Orin into the Jace. Um, and then the mid lane, it's not going their way at all. Froggen has had priority all game long, and even from the early parts of the game where they ganked Niski, started going in his favor. So Contract's just giving a little bit to Froggen and Froggen making a lot of it. As bottom lane has been the one place where they can maybe get some pushes going because the Tristana E passive, but that dive put them behind. Yeah, you can see definitely still getting gold, scaling up towards that two item point. Ole able to easily save him if needed. So things going kind of according to plan here for Golden Guardians as Contracts will start the Rift Herald. Yeah, he's going to start it up. The Cloud Drake isn't really a high priority for a lot of teams. And they have that mid priority that Froggen's using just to go up there. And even if you look at the monopoles now, Niski's not going to be able to stay in mid lane for too much longer here. I mean, they just keep invading on the blue. It's yeah. been a really good plan for Golden Guardians as Rift Herald will be felled and the eye picked up. Now time for Golden Guardians to collect that first turret of the game as Blabber is at least trading. They did get that first Infernal Cloud Drake. We'll take their namesake Drake off the map because why not, given that this is their strong half to play on. But we are kind of waiting for this mid-game where Golden Guardians seem to be pretty far advantaged. This contract will channel up the Herald, summon it here in mid lane, and that should be enough to take it down. Frog and also here just to make sure it happens. Ole even voyages in. And speaking of making sure it happens, that's solo gold over to Froggen. Froggen is just rolling in the dough right now. He's gonna go get that blue buff too. Shake it! No, All no, right. not enough there. Extra charge does do some damage. Contract takes his Gromp away. I mean, Licorice is gonna get what vision he can. Oh, red buff. Make sure it happens. Licorice too late to maybe steal that bit of gold away. We're looking at a 3,000 gold advantage for Golden Guardians, or 2,000 gold advantage really early in the game. This is only 15 minutes in. They use the Rift Herald and they've Already had priority in the mid lane for Froggen already. With that turret down, he can shove the wave even further, which means that Niski's reply is going to be even longer uh, before it gets there to wherever Froggen goes, or it's gonna be incredibly delayed if he goes to the other lane. That's always something where you can get counter roams off by going to the opposite side that you saw the mid laner go, and it just means it'll be even more delayed. So Niski's gonna be very slow to all of these plays. Yeah, I mean, you might wanna move your, say, your dual lane out there, but they need to deal with the bottom outer turret first, and at least, keep some part of the map where you have strength? Well, I actually feel like right now, because it wasn't one of the side turrets that went down, you kind of make the map Froggen Kingdom, and you want him to go wherever. He's got the central part of the map. You go to top or bottom, depending on what's being shoved or what you need. I don't feel like a lane swap is really warranted just yet for Golden Guardians while they're in the lead. You just use Froggen's advantage, because you don't want to kind of mess with what's going on here. Oh, yeah, no. C9 do is what I was trying to yeah. play. Oh, now. okay, yeah. But I think they're tethered here to try and get some gold as contracts. Also down, starting off a potential 3v3. So now that, you know, you're right, now that the pressure has opened up in mid, the one strong point of the map for Cloud9 here in bot lane, if Rogan just keeps coming down though, it's not gonna be that strong as Zazel does try and get the pole in. We'll find two. Oh, wait. Well, gonna get knocked up there. Definitely does have his ulti. So this has to be a bit more patient, Sneaky jumping in. They wanna try and get contract. Whoa, that was real nice! As they devour and face call off to safety. That's the nesting doll play right there. That's where it's like getting his belly and getting the Callista. Let's go. Three people all get out there. And that is fantastic. That means that going for that play, even though Froggen was pretty late to it, because Niski just abandoned a wave to do it, that meant that Cloud9, they get this turret, but they don't get any kills. 
And again, kind of the same thing we're talking about, Cloud9. Yes, they have some strength to play with, but they really have to start over committing resources to get some of that work done. So Niski has to fall a little bit further behind in CS. He'll catch this wave as Froggen pushes it back out. Sneaky is building up gold. He has finished that infinity edge as Froggen in onto Niski, getting that damage down. And just going for the chip away combos here, trying to just attack his, his uh, inventory of the potions and get those down, and then eventually go for an all in or push him off. You see, Niski's backing right now, Froggen decides not to. Even though he's walking over a ward, Niski's gonna complete his back and try to walk back with filled up potions. So Froggen will have to clear this wave and Froggen gets kind of a moment to decide to do whatever he wants. Back, go top, anything. Yeah, it looks like Sneaky's walking back down to the bot lane as well. So looks like no changes for now as map right. is opening up a little, but there's still more turrets to attack. Yeah, you kind of want, is they gonna put Olay and definitely mid? so that they can use the Tom Kench ultimate to go to either side lane. That might be the play here. You can see Licorice warding. He's like, yeah, people are off the map. I'm a little worried that maybe some people are coming up to gank me. And as effective as Ornn is in team fights and as the game goes later, we're not there yet. Licorice has been doing nothing but farming minions under his turret as Haunter has been pushing in towards him. And you can see that Klepto has been paying off. The call was cashed in as well. It's Black Cleaver plus the Yomus just to that frozen fist right now, Icebone Gauntlet. Yeah, it's about 1,300 gold advantage for Haunter. So that's, I mean, they both have one turret. It's the CS, it's the call, it's everything. So 1,300 is a lot, but now the Tristana's on the side lane. Licorice, yeah, oh. Kind of getting 1v1 by wait, 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 wait. this turret. Ignite, oh, not good. He's good. enough, but it was close. Cloud 9, though, Cloud 9, though <laughs> trying to force another turret. They will actually go up in structures as Sneaky and Zayz will push down the tier 2. Yeah, and I thought that was why they wouldn't want to lane swap at all as Golden Guardians. I feel like you didn't want to mess with the delicate balance of the map, and you already had an advantage. And like you said, it was kind of on Cloud 9 to make something happen. Here, though, Froggen will get that top side turret. Now it's just, can people rotate to the mid fast enough? This composition for Golden Guardians doesn't have much wave clear compared to the Orianna or even the Tristana. So you have to be able to clear this out ASAP with as little people as possible. I mean, Try to keep them here. I think it's just too much. Yeah. They've got more people. Sneaky is such a good demolitionist that with that Drake coming up, Cloud9 continue to again abuse their strong half of the map. If there is kind of the obvious hope here for Cloud9, it is how well Sneaky has been doing. Blabber also caught Haunter, Hazel grabs a knockup, procs the Conqueror and just demolishes Haunter's health bar. Yeah, and Zazel had flash there if he really wanted to commit to it, but even chunking the Jace out is more or less a guarantee that he won't be in this um, Drake fight at all. So you secure this Ocean Drake, has three Drakes for Cloud9, even while they are behind, and that's off of that bottom lane, that's off of the performance that Flavers had being on this side of the map more than not. Yeah, I think this quickly realized where they needed to play to. To Golden Guardian's credit, they've done the same to get themselves to this spot now, both Froggen and Deathly have finished their first two items. Mm. Now, this is that part in the game where if you're this Fed LeBlanc running around, you're very team dependent because you have to have people ward for you. It's not the solo plays that you're able to make. And it might be like a semi team fight or a skirmish that allows the LeBlanc to do what she wants because she's not a split pusher. It's not leave her in the side lane and it's an inevitability she will take the turrets of the Nexus. And it's not, hey, she wants to show up against the Orianna and help wave clear, because then you just get pushed in on your turret and the Tristana gets like pot shots at it. So you want to find like a fight you can collapse on from the flank. It just becomes don't let don't have your team die before you get there. And it's a little frustrating. It's very hard to navigate as the Fed LeBlanc. Yeah, and again, you have good tools. Olay's ultimate can help get around the map. Contracts is great in any sort of 2v2, or even just 2v1 if you're trying to pick someone off, but I think between the Orn and the likes of the Tristana, and even the Ori, Cloud9 feel very solid in the 5v5 mid game. Flabber though, forced to burn that stopwatch as he got stunned by Contracts. And that will be all she wrote for that play as Haunter does get the turret down in bot lane. So Golden Guardians will equalize on structures once more. Yeah, Haunter is the one who has to do that heavy lifting in the side lane here. He's got the Vitality, he's got the Black Cleaver, but it's already two upgraded items for Licorice in his inventory. And remember, those upgraded items are a thousand gold worth of combat stats. So just by being Orn, He's got 2,000 more gold in combat stats than he had before. So if we did look at the goal, it's kind of, I would say, more or less even in combat stats here. That's a 1v4 here for Licorice. Got his flash. Fails to burn it, though, but does hold on to the ulti. Fates Call also burnt there by Deathly as they tried to dive. So here's an ult from Licorice. Going to try and keep this turret alive for a little longer. Finds three on the bowling ball, but not enough to save the turret. That's Cloud9 just trying to play it. Turret rush here as they will take yet another one here in top side. They have a better minion wave, so they can continue to push and have Sneaky on this Tristana actually deal a lot of damage to that turret. And then they're gonna 
you potentially say like, hey, they're coming, so let's go ahead and get priority over the Baron, which is the next thing people are going to play around at the post-20 minute mark. And you can see Cloud9 move back through, put some tunnels, put some vision down, make sure things are swept out. And Niski and Froggen doing wave clear battles here in mid lane. Froggen though with that Banshee is playing up and aggressive. Niski does knock it off. But Sneaky's going to have to go back and buy. Cloud9 are going to be forced into some sort of reset here. So despite the good early game and Golden Guardian still having a lead, this game is getting balanced pretty precariously. Yeah, uh, I feel like the goal that Orn kind of creates for himself here with the fact that he just, he has 3,000 gold on the field right now. It's those two items in his inventory, and then he just gave the Molten Edge to Sneaky. So there's actually, in terms of combat stats, they have 43 or 42.6K. So Cloud9 are actually more or less in the lead, add in the Infernal Drake on top of it. And so the scoreboard at the top is going to be a little deceptive compared to the inventories and what actual combat stats are being brought to the table. It feels like for how much pressure Golden Guardians were applying early. Cloud9 did a good job responding appropriately and not falling too far behind. So many times we've seen Cloud9 you know, get behind in games that never fall. They tend to not fall dramatically behind as Frog, and he's trying to find pick Ooh. off. That's a huge chunk of damage on the Zephyr, like knife down. He goes back through, a heal burnt there by Sneaky to try and save him, but Frog is able to find the pick off. Uh, that was bad. Zazel pops ulti really late, flashes as well, re-engages when he's really low, and it, it gives them so much here, because now Golden Guardians get to get control of this area where they don't want to face check an Alistar with this composition, because they aren't very tanky at all. And it gives them a lot here, because now they can start poking, picking. Yeah, if they get Blabber, that's a really good pick oh. around Baron. Shockwave not going to connect, but Niski, I think, able to defend his jungle. Here's Licorice, so we're going to find the re-engage. Knockup does not connect. A C9 still fighting Sneaky with three items is begging for a target. Yeah, he really wants to get in there. He's got so much gold in those items, and those two items on top of the fact that you compare that to what the Callista's running around with, he's really far ahead. I'm checking the inventories and seeing that's only 600 gold, but it's, it's the fact that the items are really cheap. Hold on, he's going to go execute Ole. Ole is going to get jumped on. That's Blabber with that execute kill. Now haunts of the next target. Sneaky also in jump range, but does not pull the trigger. Cloud9 back towards the mid lane briefly as they are looking to flush all the vision out of this side of the map and get Dominion over Baron as Froggen is in a very sneaky spot of brush. Be careful. Oh, Sneaky's going to... Oh, bo -bo -bo. I don't know if this is careful enough. All right, find Zazel will find his face. Froggen still going to jump in. That's the rocket jump away from Sneaky. Ignite is down as Froggen forced to flash into the Baron Pit. Blabber going to chase him, find the Prey Seek, and knock up lands. There's the shutdown. And the quick reactions there pick up Froggen, get his bounty as well. And that's another thing that needs to be considered is Golden Guardian, since they're in the lead in terms of gold, they have these bounties stacking up on them. The 500 on Jace now, the 600 on Kalista for Deathly. You start picking these up, you start snowballing very quickly in the, into the lead, because it's only a 500 gold difference between these teams. And then, of course, the Ornn items. And I see it on cooldown. Sneaky, with the smart Phantom Dancer purchase, prevented himself from being blown to smithereens mm. in very short order. That will give Cloud9 the 5v4 advantage. Frogging up in 10 seconds means that Cloud9 collect yet another Elemental Drake. Uh, Ocean allow them, will help them siege and actually negate a lot of the Jace poke too. So it'll be really interesting to see what ends up happening as we get to that point in the game where they're just going to be going for a quick siege back and forth. Well, again, Baron's still on the table, so that's kind of the biggest objective that the teams can look at right now. There is side lane pressure still from Haunts of Frog and can move up and at least get waves pushing in their favor. Cloud9, you can see, are staying pretty closely bunched together at this stage of the game. Nobody wants to get picked off by a Tom Kentrum or Frog and hiding in another piece of brush. Yeah, Frog and hiding in a bush, though. Uh, they were able to react to it. And like you said, Sneaky had the, uh, the Phantom Dancer. He actually lived with 200 HP, or about 178, and the Phantom Dancer instantly popped off, and it was 360 shields. So the Phantom Dancer absolutely saved Sneaky's life there. He would have been popped very quickly. Cloud9 right now with great vision over the Baron. They've got two control wards down. Contracts fishes with that cocoon. Yeah. That's his hourglass, so there's plenty of damage and playmaking on the side of Golden Guardians, but Cloud9 just doing their due diligence and not letting them into the area. This is one of those games that I have that gut feeling where it's like Cloud9, even though they're behind in gold, they're going to be up in stats, they're up in pressure, they have the scaling composition here where the Ornn is picked for the scaling, right? It's not for the lane phase, it's for later on where you start giving 
thousands and thousands of gold to your team. And then you also have the Tristana. The Orianna is going to enable her later. And this, this game, I feel like it's going to be so hard for Golden Guardians to find anything with the early games of the Jace and the Elise kind of being shut down. The fact that the LeBlanc doesn't have a good wave clear pattern here and the team overall doesn't, it becomes very hard to navigate these fights. Well, Golden Guardians slowly pushing themselves towards the Baron through the mid lane, getting those minions pushed away. Sneaky's actually in the side lane, so Golden Guardian spurred to action. But Froggen cannot find a pick off here. Only Haunter has the poke as well. Got three items finished and that stopwatch, so battle ready most certainly for both sides. But finding a good fight's a lot harder for Golden Guardians, I think. Cloud9 just have all those straightforward tools between Ori Ult and Orn Ult to really make things happen. Just comes down to when the teams are going to fight. Baron's been up for a long time. Golden Guardians and C9 really don't have vision of it. The poke, but there's two Ocean Drakes. This is where you need to find a way to engage. But if you look at the Golden Guardians composition, what are you going to do? You're going to throw Olay in there? I mean, you got a pick, got yeah. a poke. I mean, it just feels like Cloud9 have more answers for your engage tools or your pixels than you really have any tools to throw at them. Mm -hmm. So again, the Oceans will regen them. They'll push the wave back out. This does give Golden Guardians finally time in the area to move their vision away, but Cloud9 are quickly back. Yeah, but do Golden Guardians even have Baron Threat? Because they have a Callista, they don't have any Mountain Drakes, and they don't have somebody who can really truly tank it and feel good about it. Like, Licorice could do that, Zazel could do that a little bit too, and it's getting to the point where when Blabber gets Guardian Angel and has some armor, he, he will feel okay about it, because you can just keep healing on Rek'Sai. So, Golden Guardians, I don't feel like they have a lot of threat on actually, like, or I guess they don't have the bluff of, hey, if you don't check, we're gonna be doing Baron. Yeah, they just have to pressure them on sidelines, and it feels like Cloud9 have been bouncing around doing that, because I feel like even though Haunter is doing well, you probably can't 1v1 Licorice. At least it'll take so long that I don't think that's a play they can realistically make, and we've seen both Contracts and Froggen fail to find picks as the game has moved on. So we've got a Death Cap upcoming now for Niski with two Need to See Large Rods. Sneaky is working towards item number four with a pickaxe and a Vampiric Scepter in his inventory. And it does feel like the onus is on Golden Guardians to make some magic as Cloud9 leap towards Ole. Gonna get the knock up there. Fate's call gets him to safety. But that's that cooldown used pretty easily. As Licorice back in, maybe looking for the ulti, not just yet. Froggen with a flank finds the minion wave. Yeah, that's all he can really do. Unfortunately for him, that's, that's all he can find is some priority on this mid lane, or at least evening out the priority. But Sneaky's gonna have that top lane wave pushed. He'll get priority on that top side. Maybe take a jungle camp too, and now it just becomes very scary for Golden Guardians. This is where you get paralyzed. You go, we have a lead, but what do we do? How do we push this lead? And this composition is just coming down to Haunter on the side lane has to be able to beat Licorice, but I don't think he can beat Bjorn with those items. Yeah, you can see he's getting pressure down now onto the turret, but Licorice is roaming down to meet the wave. Actually, there's no tier two, excuse me. So only to see inhibitor turret to threaten, and that takes way too long for Haunter to commit to an find any sort of pressure. There is another Drake coming up in 10 seconds as well, but I think Cloud9 are happy with their four. So if Golden Guardians want to go down there, they'll probably just lose the Baron. So I think Cloud9 will continue to play on this top side. Hmm. Nope. Sneaky doing a check there on the Froggen. The fact you have that, that Molten Edge, the 110 AD on that and then Infinity Edge, you just see, okay, how much damage am I doing? Okay, he's doing a lot. And I think he's going for a little extra oomph there. He's got the Vamp Scepter to make sure that he can heal up. Haunter's actually going to be able to solo that. There's Licorice, though. Flank also coming around there from Zazel, I believe. Shockwave does connect on the Contracts, and Ole goes down. Haunter, he's so late to this fight as Contract is on the wrong end of Sneaky's double kill. Yeah, and that was huge. Zazel was able to get in there from the flank perfectly with the Righteous Glory. And Froggen trying to get something done here, but with those two people drop, and the fact that Deathly didn't have his ultimate back just yet, it was still on cooldown, it's coming up right now. That was what the game changer was. Because they burnt it earlier, invading in the red side. Cloud9 now 3v5 against Golden Guardians at the Baron. No smites here on the Golden Guardian side either, so. Any hope of a steal is pretty unlikely. Licorice with a double knockup. He's going to get the party started. Zazel fights Froggen. 
They're gonna try and chase him down. Sneaky in hot pursuit wants to get it done. Froggen does dash back away. Here's the execute incoming onto Deathly, but a stopwatch is popped. TA will be the trade. Oh, oh. Sneaky on a killing spree finally fells Froggen. Hauntzer now gonna get the chase on. We'll take Wait, on Glaber. We're gonna try and find Licorice here as well as Deathly hopped away to safety. Licorice forced to flash out of the way as Sneaky. He's so far away from the rest of his teammates flanking along with Niski. What is going on? But I feel like if you enable Sneaky, he might be able to clean up this entire fight. What's the CC that would stop him? There's the TP. The wraparound Tristana flank. I've never seen this before. His licorice TP's <laughs> into ulti. Looks for the knockup. Doesn't find anyone. There's the fate's call. Finally back up. And Sneaky, he got poked out all day. Oh, he's oh, the Contracts is there. And Sneaky overstayed his welcome as Licorice. Very tanky with a stone plate pop. Ole devour after that shockwave. We'll give Golden Guardians yet another kill. They got the Baron, but it's just going to be Zazel and Niski that end up walking away with it. That was huge as well. They were able to just counter that huge fight. We see the Baron power play is already negative. Yep, negative 90, oh, 142. It was 92 when I last looked. Now a Mercurial Scimitar out for Sneaky, so has a few more options, but it felt like Cloud9 had everything go right around the Baron and then just chased a little too far, or yeah. a lot too far, to be honest. Yeah, it felt like Haunter was going to chase, maybe get Licorice there, and then it was just the old switcheroo. Licorice comes back in with the teleport, and then, oh well, they're able to turn this one around because Sneaky gets caught. Just barely. That was Ole throwing himself in. Contracts had respawned and got there. Froggen, though, he ended up dying, having to run around a whole bunch to just get out earlier. I like that Blab is looking for the 1v1 versus Froggen, but now going to have to get out. Tunnels off to safety as the rest of Golden Guardians roam up. To be honest, he might be able to at this point in the game because Froggen started falling behind in experience and in CS in the mid part of the game. As soon as they put him in the side lane, he fell behind, and it just ended up being this thing where he's level 15 while Blabber's level 15. Does a good stop there with Licorice, making sure that they can't interrupt. They go after Froggen. Froggen goes back to W, flashes away. He's going to be able to W again after the flash from Niski. And then he pops back to avoid the Ori Ball, dies to Sneaky. Now Sneaky has started running around. And we're not going to see that because the cost of APS is for later. Yeah, they, don't, they don't need to see that again. Because Sneaky with a minute left on Baron. Cloud9 going to try and break one of these inhibitor turrets. Also, the Elder Dragon spawning for the first time this game in a minute 45. Oh, he's trying to get Frog in there. Not quite able to get him. You got to be careful, though. Yeah. But the Siege, we talked about the wave clear earlier. Not a good wave clear look for Golden Guardians. So it's just going to be a pressure uh, push here from, from Cloud9. They will not push up towards the inhib, though, but at least they open up the space for them to take it. Sneaky is of taking the red buff. Also, Raptor's up if he wants those, but will rejoin his team for the time being. And I guess with a wave to go, Cloud9 might as well try this last bit of Baron push. Froggen on the side. He just W'd over the wall. He's looking for a full flank here. Gonna have to commit pretty hard, but Cloud9 usually covering their base as well. That control ward's nice. Finds Licorice. In here falls. Licorice dashes out of the way. And Golden Guardians just don't, again, just don't have tools to engage here. They don't have any way to do it. They were expecting with this composition to have pressure across the map. Have the Jace pushing in, have the Elise kind of destroy the early game. It did go their way, it just didn't go their way hard enough. And with that Drake up in 40 seconds and not much to check here, there's a blue trinket that's available. And I believe that's about it. They'd have to go check it with... Faces. Faces. Wrong something. thing to check with at this stage of the game. And they don't really have the composition to do that. No, they don't. <laughs> no Scion, nothing. Maybe another turret here for Cloud9. Oh, Guardians. Is this where you want to try and mount your defense? Licorice goes in. You know, the haunts the shockwave will miss, but it will get a flash. Slow and steady here for Cloud9. Just again, taking down structures one by one. It's like dismantling a skyscraper, Zyrene. You have to do it one floor at a time. Or you just knock the whole thing down. Oh, no, no, no. Do not do that. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. <laughs> As blue buff goes over to Cloud9 as well, also going to march themselves towards the Scuttlecraft, but more importantly, perhaps, the Elder Dragon. Yeah, the Elder Dragon, it'll go down fairly quickly. I wonder if they'll get interrupted here. I feel like they're actually just going to have them show up when it's at, like, 4,000. I think if you're going to go, you have to go pretty soon here for the Golden Guardians. They will try and find the pick. Licorice with the ulti. Zay's already popped his. He's relatively tanky. Dragon goes over. Cloud9 now reinitiate the team fight. And Olay, he's just stuck in the front line. His contract has almost no help to speak of. He'll be slayed by Sneaky. And there's Blabber. 
into the ulti tunnel onto Hornster. He's gonna get shredded to pieces as Sneaky finds the shutdown and Froggen, he's trying again to find these flanks, but the super minions are all about to finish the game. Yeah, Olay's gonna go back, but definitely he's gotta bring him back with that Abyssal Voyage. That's gonna remove the Banshee's Veil. Blabber actually is gonna go after him. He's gonna try he's again. Got lower cooldown Q. Yep, Q yeah. back up, cancels it. Cloud9 marching into the base. One Nexus turret already down. It's only definitely an Olay right now. Froggen is going back. But Cloud9, I think they're just going to knock the rest of the Nexus down. Golden Guardian, there's nothing they can do to stop the onslaught of Cloud9 on the Nexus. And they'll stay seven stray wins here in the LCS. And we dive towards the fountain and yet another victory. That was a game where Cloud9, they drafted for late with the Orianna and the Tristana. The Orn kicked in later and Licorice did a great job of surviving as well as the rest of the team. And once Froggen started getting all, all over the map early game, it, the mix-up was really what put the tempo back in Cloud9's favor. They were able to get all the Drakes early, and I feel like even though it looked like it was out of their control, they still had control at the beginning of the game, as much as they could. It does always feel like, you know, there's a level of losses you deem acceptable when you draft your comp and move it into a game. And I think in this game, despite the pressure, Cloud9 knew what side of the map to play on, knew where they could find trades and be strong, and just kind of played the game out calmly. That was the quietest game I've seen from Blabber in forever. I think Academy's changed him. I don't know if I like it. I don't like it. Oh, but at the same time, though, it was really a team effort playing around Sneaky for the late game. Zazel had a fantastic flank that started off one of those team fights that led them to the Baron. And it just felt like Golden Guardian's draft was really focused on Beat Cloud9 early game, that's what they're good at. Well, Cloud9 just had a 37 minute game with a late game composition, and they were able to take it home very quickly once they did get a lead. And I think that's the beauty of Cloud9 that we've seen from this split is no matter what kind of game it is, whether it's constant fighting, macro, map play, split push, whatever style Cloud9 have chosen to use, the game inevitably ends the same way. You hit a point and Cloud9 wins. Yeah, and they're doing a great job of closing it out, playing as a team. And that's really what kind of dismantled Golden Guardians is they came in with a game plan that involved the whole team and they were able to execute. Well, with that, let's send it down to Ovali and a member from the Victorious team. Thanks, Pastry. Blabber, long time no see. Welcome back to the LCS and you're welcome back with the win. How does it feel? Uh, it feels really good to come back and be able to win. Uh, pretty excited to play LCS again and yeah, looking for the future. So what's bringing you back? Because I talked to Reaper before this game started, and he said, well, you know, uh, Blabber's put in the work, and he's gotten a little bit smarter. Not too smart, he emphasized that, but you have improved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think Reaper's uh, noticed that I've been working harder, I guess. And I think one of also the reasons that I've been brought back is playoffs are coming up soon. And uh, with our scoreline, we're pretty confident we're going to make playoffs. And he's trying to prepare for a seven-man roster. Pretty much it. How do you think that seven-man roster is going to uh, kind of help the team's chances going into playoffs? Because we saw how strong it kind of made the team during Worlds. Uh, I definitely think a seven-man roster or just uh, substitute players is definitely helpful. Uh, after like a loss, you can sub in new players and it can just change the environment. And uh, me and uh, Spence Garen, we have different play styles too. So it's just a change up. Now you, Cloud9 takes on TSM tomorrow. Will you be in that game? I'm not sure. <laughs> We're gonna have to track down Reaper for that answer then. Blabber, congratulations again and thank you. Analyst Desk, should he be in tomorrow? <laughs> All right, everyone, thumbs up, thumbs down. You ready? <laughs> Three, For two, blabber? one, blabber. <laughs> My, mine's sideways. <laughs> are, are you gonna, you gonna are, dive yeah, Tom Kent's commitment. Thumbs up, sideways, and thumbs down, by the, the way. No are you, confidence. Are you thumbs diving thumbs Tom Kent's no Kalista yes. again? Yes, it's blabber, of course he Same is. Thumbs down. No All right. I, I like the aggression. He, he was uh, trying to take fights, you know? Like, when LeBlanc jumps on people, you see people run away from him, but he's like, no, I'm going on LeBlanc, and I like that. Yeah. All right, so there we go. Cloud9 took a win. Scary in the early game. A couple of fights got turned around. Golden Guardians were up in kills for a lot of it. Seemed up in gold for a fair bit. Uh, so let's talk about the fact that this was kind of interesting. We had uh, clearly an early game team versus a team fight team, and, and the early game team did get that lead. Yeah, and the early game team you're talking about um, is also a split push team, right? They have really good pieces for it. LeBlanc and Jace can both uh, be lane bullies and then transition into side lanes with Tom Kench using Abyssal Voyage to help out uh, split pushers when you yep. draw the map apart. 
And you theoretically should be able to set that up because Orin should fall behind. You should have priority. And then their bot lane is even really strong. So you should win the early game to transition to this pretty cleanly. The enemy team does have good engage. So you have mm -hmm. to be smart when you transition. Uh, but you do have all the tools. Right. I mean, the beginning of the game was basically a Frogger show on top of contracts, right? He had insane amount of pressure mid after getting that early game gank. You see him roaming down towards bot, gaining those kills, shoving in mid lane, taking the tower advantage. He's up like 2,000 gold really early in the game, and he's just destroying the entire portion of this early game. And it was really nice reacting by Frogging, but I think C9 as a whole could have played these a lot better. They, they don't actually finish off the Kalista there to like really secure this bot lane. And then instead of moving out together as a unit, because you have contract, or uh, excuse me, uh, Rek'Sai's knock Rek knockup, and you have Alistair pulverized. You can protect from LeBlanc chains, even though the chain goes off, you can still protect her with the pull, but they go aggressive, which opens up a path for Elise to then go aggressive onto the Rek'Sai, and then once again, they, they tunnel a little bit on getting kills. So they could have played these plays safer. Like you're playing against this all in early game team comp, you don't need to slam them in the early game. Same with this dive, you don't need to like, Tom Kench Kalist is hard as hell to dive, and they're trying to force this when their mid laner uh, has been losing a little bit early on. I think they could have played early game a little bit safer. Right, there's a lot of different things they could have done here mechanically. Honestly, when Sneaky jumped onto LeBlanc at, the, at level five right there, I'm thinking in my head, I think he's about to flash out immediately because I don't believe he can do that. Yeah. LeBlanc's cooldowns <laughs> are coming back up and immediately he dies for it. However, this is one of those cases where LeBlanc is super strong early game, but how does he transition that into a late game? And you saw that they tried to set up the one 3 one And while it looks good for them to do, they didn't have the right conditions there. One, if you're trying to do that, to have that work, you need to have priority in mid. And Tom Kench and Kalis did not have it over Orianna. Also, Tristana pushes towers faster than you do. So if you're not able to pressure the mid tower and you can only pressure top tower with LeBlanc, the Tristana will kill your tower before the split pushing LeBlanc will. Yeah. So you need to leave LeBlanc on the island, leave her alone, have the least trail the Jason, contest the 2v2 from the bot lane with the top and jungler. Yeah, it was really interesting because as soon as they fell behind in the 1-3-1, they ended up trading a ton of turrets way too evenly. Yep. And then it felt like they just gave up on it. They're like, ah, screw it. Let's go mid and ARAM versus uh, an Orn comp, which is not the right thing to do at all. Yeah, yeah, I gotta say, the fact that so many turrets got traded back and forth felt really huge. And the thing is, I felt like there were parts that, that could have worked. Uh, for example, we saw the first time LeBlanc went to Orn's lane, who's got like the Iceborne Gauntlet and just the Catalyst. Like, she almost solo killed him. So like one hit close to dead, like, and that's what you want with like different damage types for your two lanes. And I will say for a lot of the early game, as I think especially Froggen and Contracts did play it very well for the Golden Guardians. They were both super mm -hmm. active in the early game, you know, roaming down, getting these kills and setting up uh, this composition for possible success, you know, through the mid game. Right. I don't believe I ever really saw Jace do anything that game. And when you have a Jace, you need him to do stuff like taking towers. I'm pretty confident his tower damage is less than LeBlanc's that game. And that's not what you really want to see on your Jace, right? He's not split pushing. I don't know if he wasn't able to because he isn't strong enough to be up the Orn. But you mm -hmm. can't pick Jace and just send him to the team fighting. That's just worse than an Orn. Especially a Jace that's backed up by a Tom Kench. You know, the Abyssal Voyage threat should be, uh, you know, extra power there. Right. Yep. And of course, uh, we got into the mid game. We got team fights. Cloud9 took a Baron over. They then got over aggressive, and this is the first Ornal. This is the second one at the end of this team fight. You know, I, I wish that we had different characters here. So there was the 1 3 1. I first off wish that there's an Ezra Tom Kench because they can hold mid lane more easily. But it seems like Ole needs the crutch of Kalista ulti a lot to save himself in situations. You saw this game multiple times throughout. He had to be saved by his Kalista ulti, and then if you don't have that anymore, there's only so many things you can do. C9 does the Baron here perfectly well. When you're being pressured in by the enemy team for the carries, you just go inside the Baron pit, and now they have to go through your tanks to hit you, and you can just finish Baron here. I don't really like the fact that C9 went and chased after kills no. here. They're, if you look at the minimap, they're right next to the top lane tower. The creepers are right there. Tristana's pushing it, and then someone on the C9 squad is pinging, help, help, kill, 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 kill. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but this is a situation where you choose objectives over kills, and this ends up getting your own team killed instead of just taking the free inhibitor top. Yeah, I mean, this is, we talk about La Casa de Fiesta, this is it, like, prime cut. And I don't like that. This is my casa. I, we have to work in this casa, and I don't want it to be this much of a, of a fiesta. It makes it more fun, though, right? Not my second place team. Come on, guys. Go reset. You know, you know that's the right call. For the record, yes. in that replay, we did see Jace doing some good stuff. Yeah. Hancho was able to fight good. off like 1v3 at the end there, so. It's decent NA Jace. Maybe we're turning the corner on this one, and we're getting good at the champion, you know, three, five years late, but. Starting to get better Jace games, it feels like. We can kind of put that meme to bed one day. Yeah, to Mark's point, though, uh, after the teamfight comp gets the teamfight victory and the Baron, like, that's your whole list. 
You're like, good job, team fight. Cop. Game over. Got, got, got the goals that we wanted. Yep. And then Reset, they go for walk the up mid. And yeah. When they're chasing around, they lose track of enemies. Yeah, I think they thought, well, Froggen's dead. We can take any four on four. They were wrong. But either way, Clownin took the win. So if you're looking for a way to get sweet official LCS swag and LCS merch, the merch store is now live. Grab official jerseys from...